Hey team, well, welcome to our Thursday night call. It is January 21st. It is finally almost the end of January. I swear this month has been going on forever. I feel like we should be in April by now. Like bring me the sunshine, bring me the 65 degree weather. Like, come on, bring it to me. But it is not April yet. We will get there soon. So like every call, we are going to start off with a recognition. Holy moly, 31, no, 39 coaches on the board with Success Club points. That is a whole lot of lives being changed. So that is amazing. Um, some coaches are on there. They've only been a coach like two weeks. So heck yes, virtual high five to everybody. We're making it a thing. If you haven't caught on to it, we're doing it. Um, even I don't care how corny it is. We're still going to do it. All right, so let's do some recognition real quick. Um, and for anybody that jumps on the call later, if you can just mute yourself, that would be amazing. So the following people have already locked in at Success Club 5. The prize this month is a training from Jen something and another, the author of You Are a Badass. And then this month is double success uh, resort dollars for the trip. Um, so congratulations to Amanda Hooper. She has 18 Success Club points. Stephanie Parks has 14. Bill Odenweller has 13 at Bravo Hubby. He worked really hard for those points. So if you ever see Bill, give him a shout out because you know he worked hard for those. Lindsay Sessions has 13. Rebecca Adikis, I apologize if I mispronounce that, has eight. Debbie Pearson has eight. Megan Eadson has seven. Victoria Gray has six. Lisa San Miguel has six. And I have 37. So heck yes to all the people that are on the board for Success Club. Don't forget to ring the bell. There's a lot of you that have success club points that haven't rang the bell. I can't congratulate you if you don't ring the bell. So if you're new and you're like, what's this bell? It's on the very top of the page. It's the pin post. You ring it when you add a coach. Sell a challenge pack or Shakeology HD. Last year, we had like 4,700 comments. We're trying to beat that this year. Some of you are like literally one point away. Cara Theodore, Kelsey Neeson, Sarah Stone, Katrina Waters, and Jennifer Merz, like you just need one more, one more person to help. But I know you guys got this in the bag. I have faith in every single one of you. We have a whole lot of announcements and then we'll get to the meat of the call. So I hope you have your calendars ready because I have a lot coming at you. Okay. So first things first, team cup registration. Um, how many people, you know, don't unmute yourself, just raise your hand. How many people have signed up for a team cup who are registered? All right, I need to see some more hands. So if you are not on a Team Cup, post in the team page. Say, hey, me, looking for a Team Cup. Pretty sure Kelsey made a post today um, that said, if you're not on a Team Cup, please comment below. Get on a Team Cup. So what is this Team Cup? It's a competition um, with the coaches that you're with five people on a team. You have a captain and then four other people. One lifetime diamond per team. So like I couldn't stack my team with like all the other diamonds. One diamond per team. You are working together to reach certain tiers. I don't remember what the points are, but if you hit tier one, you get this really fugly Shakeology cup. If you reach two, you get the cup and a shirt. If you reach tier three, you get the cup, a shirt, and a very ugly blanket. But it's all about working together to making goals happen. It's about pushing yourself to hit success club, to rank up for the first time. So you need to be on the cup. I don't care if you're like, Ashley, I haven't hit success club five once as a coach. I don't care. Get on a cup. I was on a team cup with a couple of girls a long time ago. We were like team hammer time. We still talk to this day. Like we got so close that month. Make a group chat, make a group, get to know one another, set goals together. I feel really bad for my team on the team cup because I'm going to be up their rear ends like every single day. So sorry, team fired up boss ladies. It's, it's going down though. So get on a team cup. All right. New coach internship starts February 1st. If you are a new coach and you are not in the current internship, February 1st starts the new coach internship. It's a 30-day internship all done through Facebook. Um, it's amazing. It's probably the best training we've ever had. We teach you how to post, when to post, what to post, and all the other fun stuff that you'd want to learn about the business. So make sure you are a part of that. Uh, we have a new coach call February 2nd. We're going to do it every first Tuesday of the month. And then if we have a ton of coaches that seem to be joining throughout the month, I'll throw in an extra one. We have a coach sneak peek this Sunday. It is through an event page. It is not in a group. It is not a phone call. It's not a webinar. It is in the event page. So we did it last time. We had an amazing turnout. We've already invited 2,000 people to the sneak peek. 2,000. That's a whole lot of people that get to learn about how awesome Team Fire to Get Fit is. So if you have not invited to the sneak peek, go into the team page. It's somewhere in the team page. I can link the event, click your going to the event, and then go through and invite your 
someone trying to call me through Facebook. I don't know why they ever invented this feature because nobody ever means to call anybody through Facebook. I don't know what that's all about, but I really want the noise to go away. I don't know how to stop it. See, I told you we're super professional. Stop. I don't want to talk to you. Decline. Decline. Okay. Okay. Back to what we're talking about. Um, so sneak peek, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If they cannot make it to the event at 9, that's okay. Let them know they can come back and read the information later. Please do not tag people in the event saying, hey, here's the event. We don't want people turning off the notifications. You simply just invite them, and they can choose if they want to come. So make sure you're inviting people to the sneak peek. What's next? Emerald to Diamond training starts on February 15th. This is a 30-day training from the top coaches in the business. This stuff is like the bomb.com. So you must be an Emerald no later than February 11th. I'm sorry if you hit it February 19th, you cannot join the training. So you must hit Emerald by February 11th. If you're already a lifetime Emerald, meaning you've ranked up to Emerald and you lost Emerald a long time ago and you only have one coach underneath you, you must have a second coach underneath you by the 11th. No exceptions. Nobody will be allowed into this training unless you have applied for it, we've approved you, and you have sent $10 in. The $10 will be put into a pot and at the end of the training, Anybody that has a ranked up will get a portion of the pot. And you're probably like, Ashley, why am I paying for training? Because let's face it, how many times have we done trainings that we don't participate in? We're like, oh, we're going to join them. But then we just kind of flake out and we quit doing them. Pretty sure if you're going to invest $10, you're going to show up and be a part of these trainings. So Emerald, no later than February 11th. Um, what else? Do I have three more things, then I'll get onto the content of the call. Josh Coates, I've talked about him before. He um, is on the John Maxwell team. I do training with him every single Monday. I've done past trainings with him. He is amazing. Um, I approached him, and he is doing a team wide phone call for like a ton of different coaches. It is going to be February 8th at 9 15 Eastern Standard Time. This guy, you have to pay to even get him to talk to you. So the fact that he is doing this for our team is huge. So if you can make it to the phone call, be on it. He's going to talk about how to overcome your fears. He works with the top coaches, Brittany Powers, Carly Del Carlo. Um, there's a ton more coaches. Those are like the first two. Be on that call if you can be that. Like I said, I have. you cannot talk to him unless you pay to talk to him. And he has a wait list so long that I will never be able to have personal phone calls with him because I'd be like person 500. So be on this call if you can be on it. Last two things. Cafe Latte Packets, a lot of people have asked if it's in the sampler. I don't know what's going on. It's not in the sampler. My suggestion to you is to buy a packet, a box of packets, of 24 packets, and sell them. $5 per packet. Not only does it pay for your entire box of Shakeology, but then you can write it off as a tax write-off. So if you have a lot of people that want to try the latte, uh, that is my suggestion to you. And then the last thing, and then I promise we'll get to the slides, um, 10 minutes of announcements. That's big. Um, we have a top 10 group. It's people. It's a group that people are, that are pushing to get in coats, C O A T S coats. Um, his wife's a coach, but he's amazing. Um, we have a group it's called top 10, like for 366 or something. Anyways, it's a group of people that we are all, all pushing to be in the top 10 team this year. Um, we do mastermind calls every single Wednesday. We just talk about our goals, our previous week. We talk about things that we can build on. We keep each other accountable. If you would like to be a part of this group, please, please message me and I will get you in there. This is for people that really want to work their business and that don't mind me messaging and be like, hey, you haven't posted what's going on. Um, so that's the top 10 group. Whoo! All right, let's get to the content because y'all did not come to hear me talk about 1 million bajillion announcements. All right, screen share. We have slides. Um... I'm going to need, I'm going to like turn off my face and showing, I'm going to need one person to unmute themselves and just say, Hey, I see this. I see it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So tonight we're talking about posting with a purpose. This call is primarily about talking uh, about posting on Facebook. Um, these are merely my suggestions. I started off just like every single one of you with barely any Facebook friends. I had 400 Facebook friends when I started three years ago. I now have 2.8 thousand Facebook friends. I have over 4,000 followers on Facebook and I don't count my other social medias. So this is merely my suggestions to you. So I have a favor to ask. I can't see anybody, but I ask if you're on your phone during this call, put it down. Your challengers can wait. 
your notifications can wait, the coach that you're signing up can wait, please be present for this call because if you're not present, you're gonna miss a ton of information. So first things first is you need a wow factor. You need to draw other people to you. Yeah, you can post on Facebook and you may get a like or two, but if you don't have this like wow factor that makes people come to you, then no one's gonna look at your Facebook. Think about the coaches and we all, and don't pretend you don't go to other coaches' pages to look them, but think about the coaches that you're always looking at or that you have in the top of your news feeds because you always want to know what they have to say. Tara Carr, she's always in the top of my news feed. Katie Hefner, it may be because I'm mildly obsessed with her. Katie, if you listen to this, it's really not bad. I don't stalk you, I promise. But these are coaches that I want to see a lot of because they have that wow factor. You have to draw others to you. And you have to be 100% yourself. Don't try to be a Lindsay Matway. Don't try to be a Melanie Mitro. Don't try to be a Tara Carr. Be an Ashley Odenweller. Be a Kelsey Neeson. Be a Cara Theodore. Be yourself. Because guess what? If you're fake, everybody is going to see right through it. You have to be yourself. You have to be unique. You also have to be relatable. You can't just post something and think people are going to relate to you. You have to give them something to relate about. And I'll give you some examples towards um, later in the phone call. But you have to be relatable. And if you don't have that wow factor yet, create it. Create it any time. It took me a while to really figure out like what my wow factor was, like what my content was when I was posting. But think of other coaches that have been in the business for a very short amount of time. You could be the next Brittany Powers. I think she is amazing. She's a top 10 coach. She went from a two-star diamond, I believe, in the end of 2015 to a seven-star top 10 elite coach. She did that in two years. That can be you, but you have to have a wow factor. You have to have content. You have to be relatable. Um, and you have to work towards your market. You can't work, work towards other people's market. <coughs> I don't work. If you're on the call and you're not muted, do you mind muting yourself? Sorry, I can't mute everybody. Um, I'm not a mom. I cannot relate to other moms. So I am not going to work towards that market. I have nothing in common with that market. Now, you want to talk about dog moms? Sure. I could totally relate to dog mom. I'm going to pretend I'm a dog mom. I am a dog mom. Remember, like, that is my market. Planners, I love planners. I can relate to those people. PCOS, endometriosis. Those are things that I can relate to. So if you are trying to relate to a market that you had nothing in common with, just stop. Work towards your market, whether you're a stay-at-home wife, you're a stay-at-home mom, you're a soccer mom, um, your kids in baseball, your kids are in sports. If you love wine, hello, Kelsey. Um, she probably really doesn't love wine that much. I just pick on her because she works at a winery. But you have to work towards your market. All right. Why does posting relate to coaching? It always will relate to coaching. This is how you're going to build your business. You can absolutely create a six to seven figure income business on Facebook. 100% you can absolutely do it. Facebook, or not, not even just Facebook, the social media is the fastest and quickest way to grow your business. You cannot neglect Facebook. I'm sorry, but you cannot be a coach and not post on Facebook and not build your business. The more people you connect with, the more people you attract, the more your business grows. Your friends will tell people about you. At least four or five times a week, I'm getting tagged saying, hey, so-and-so, this is who I was telling you about. Because they're seeing my posts, I'm giving them quality content. I'm not just posting to post. Friends will tell people about you if you give them something to talk about. Your business, like I said, your business will grow so much faster than Facebook. On Facebook, yeah, you can do face-to-face, -face, and I highly recommend still doing face-to-face, -face, but you could talk to somebody for two or three hours, and then that's it. You could post and reach 10 to 20 people in 20 minutes. I don't know about you, but I'd rather post and reach a hell of a lot more people than talk to somebody for three hours, and then my entire day is gone because I just spent three hours on one person. This is the quickest way to build your business. Um, sorry, I'm reading over my notes to make sure I don't miss anything. So yes, this is posting on Facebook is how you build your business. It's how it relates to coaching. It's how people find you. All right, so let's think about, let's talk about some things to remember. First things first is being a coach does not change who you were or who you are. 
It does not change the person you are. You just have to be a little bit more mindful about your actions because people are watching. Everything about who you're about your spell check. Everything about you prior to being a coach is still who you are. Unless it was like something really unhealthy, unless like you drink a lot or you smoke, then obviously that's not a part of who you are. But you are still the same person that you were before you were a coach. Don't forget about that person that you were. Don't try to be this like, oh, I'm the best health and fitness person ever and I know what I'm talking about, but when you really don't. Don't try to act like somebody you're not. You don't have to be an expert. Still be the person that you were before. Remember, you have to provide them with valuable content. Don't just spam them. I think, I, I know I've talked about this before, but when you become a coach and you've announced that you are a coach, people are watching. You have to watch what you put on Facebook. I'm sorry, but when I see coaches bitching, sorry, I apologize, I do curse, about Donald Trump in their news feeds, I don't have them in my news feeds anymore. They're gone. I don't want to see that. I don't follow them for that. I follow them for who they are. You have to watch what you post. Don't be negative. Don't like cause drama. Watch what you say. No, and I'm not saying no, you can't post anymore, but I probably wouldn't make seven posts about football in one day because guess what? People are going to quit following you because they were sick of seeing those seven posts and now they're no longer going to see all the other things that you post. You have to provide them with um, content. And I don't mean just post a bag of you holding a shake out, a post picture of you holding a shakeology bag. What does that do? That does absolutely nothing. To me, it's kind of spammy. Talk about it. So like right now I'm doing the 366 challenge where I'm drinking Shakeology every single day. So every day I post a picture of me and my Shakeology. But I'm doing that because it's holding me accountable and other people are watching and be like, oh, is she really going to stick with it? You have to provide them with something more. You have to provide them with valuable content. I think I've said that 10 times, but hopefully you'll remember that now. And remember, you are building relationships through your post. That's why you have to have content. That's why you can't just post a post. When it's 10 o'clock and you're like, crap, I haven't posted once. Let me just post this. Don't do that. Just, you might as well just go ahead and skip it because if you're, there's no content, if you're not able to build a relationship, it's a pointless post. Talk about figuring out your audience. You need to pick five to 10 hobbies that you like and relate those to your posts three to four times a day. So if you are primarily using your Facebook page, you need to post things other, things other than fitness. So like I am obsessed with my dog stilts. So I'm going to post pictures of stilts because people love stilts. At least they tell me they do. So I'm going to post pictures of stilts. I'm a huge planner person. So I'm going to talk about organization. Uh, you need to include those hobbies and relate them to your posts. That's how people are going to relate to you. Now, if you're posting from a like page, it has to be not good, amazing content. And it must be three to four times a day. Like pages are the hardest thing to grow. And I'm actually switching from primarily my like page to my personal page. Because what happens on your like page is only 2% of your followers are seeing your post. So for example, when I post on a like page, I get 17, 18 likes. When I post on my normal Facebook page, I get anywhere from 50 to 100 likes because it's being seen more. So if you are primarily only working with a like page and you refuse to post on your personal page, you must post three to four, five three to four times a day and it must only be fitness stuff because guess what when it comes to like pages people are following you for a reason they're not friends with you because they want to be friends with you they're following you because you they know your health and fitness coach they don't want to see your child getting potty trained they don't want to see that you washed your car they don't want to see that you cleaned your house they want to see fitness tips they want to see recipes um so your like page has to be primarily focused around fitness stuff for it to grow and please don't post at 1 a.m. in the morning. Who is going to see that besides myself? And then I'm going to shake my head and be like, why is she posting this at 1 o'clock in the morning? You have to play around with the times. You're going to have to do research. Not the same time works for every single person. I get a good amount of audience, like for me, around like, I'm not up at 9 a.m. So let's not even pretend that. Usually I'll make my first post around 11, 12. That's a good time for me. I'll do a post around dinner time when people are cooking. And then I do a post around 9 o'clock when people are scrolling on their phones watching Grey's Anatomy. You have to play around with your times. Talk about posts that can be shared. The more posts get shared, the more people will see it. E-cards are amazing. Like people love e-cards. I posted one today. People are drawn to recipes. They get shared like none other. So the more that somebody shares it, 
the more traction you're going to get on your page because it's being shared from your page. So I always say, if others can relate to it, it's going to be shared. So always ask yourself, is this something I would share? Because Lord knows, Lord knows that everybody uses Facebook to share posts nowadays. Like I don't even think people know how to post anymore because all I ever see is people sharing pictures. So make content that they're going to share. They're not going to share like a before and after. They're not going to share a picture of your dinner. They're going to share recipes. They're going to share something that's humorous to them. Um, and if you can, add your like page link or your Facebook link to the picture so people know where to go. Janelle Summers does this all the time, and it's genius. Because somebody's going to see a picture, they're going to look at the link and be like, oh, that's where it came from. Let me go check that person out. Bam, you have a new follower. So try posts that can be shared. You need to focus on quality. Like I said, don't post just a post. There are so many times I'm like, crap, I only got one post in for the night. I'm probably, I could probably come up with something, but oh no, this really sucks. Don't do it. If it's not an eye catching quality post, don't do it. Your, po your picture should be eye catching. I can't say how important, like how important enough it is for your pictures to be eye-catching. Don't put up blurry pictures. Kind of look to see where you're putting, putting up. Look, I, I hopefully duck lips are out of the picture by now, like hopefully that fad is gone. Don't do duck lip pictures. Just be cautious of what you're posting. Pay attention to what's in the background. And you may not even think about it, but somebody seeing like a toilet with the seat up, they may be like, okay, what's that? Or a sink full of dishes, and be like, oh, does this person do dishes? Like why is their house a wreck? There's many times I'm in a picture and I don't even see what I'm supposed to be looking at. I see in the background. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, did they notice that was in the background? Pay attention to what's in the background. You may be like, think like, crap, I never thought about that. But people pay attention to this. Your, qual your posts need to be a reflection of who you are. Shouldn't be a reflection of Stephanie. It shouldn't be a reflection of Kelsey. It shouldn't be a reflection of Melissa. It should be a reflection of you because they're following you. And also, Try not to do too many collages. Collages don't grab people's attention, and plus they have to look like at a million different pictures to see what they're looking at. So try to stick to one picture. Make it eye-catching. I'm not saying spend 30 minutes on a photo, please, for the love. Do not spend 30 minutes trying to come up with one good photo. But make sure they're eye-catching. You need to interact with your audience. So what do I mean by this? You need to like every single comment on a post. I cannot stress how important that is. And you need to comment on every single post. So there's, thing, there's this thing called Facebook affinity, and it's like the algorithm that Facebook uses to see who gets seen more, which is why sometimes you're like, oh my God, I didn't have a single person like my picture. Like, what's going on? Well, it probably wasn't eye-catching. It probably wasn't relatable. So nobody liked it. So therefore, Facebook says this sucks, and it dug it to the very bottom, and it makes nobody ever see it. So that's why you need to comment. Every time you comment back on a comment, it pushes it back to the top of the newsfeed. And the awesome thing, new feature about Facebook, is you can actually reply to the comment. So for example, I posted a picture today, and I literally replied back to every single person, whether it said thank you, like the emoji kissy face, whatever it may be, I commented back because every time I comment back, Facebook's like, oh, this post is getting a lot of attention. Let me push it back to the very top. Do this from your like page as well. So you have to do this. You have to interact with your audience. If you're going to make a post and you cannot be around to comment back in the first 10, 15 minutes, then it's probably not a good time to make that post if you can't answer people's questions, if you can't comment back to them. You have to interact with your audience. That is how you build relationships. All right, let's talk about tips for posting. So I'm going to give you some do's and some don'ts. One, ask people for suggestions. So I posted this picture today um, saying, hey, which bathing suit top do you think I should get? I have had, I wrote it down, 96 comments and 34 likes on this post. Do you know how many people have seen this post and how many times I've popped up into news feeds? And I've also popped up now into news feeds of people I'm not even friends with. People are replying that don't even know me because it's causing a lot of attraction and showing up in other people's news feeds. So ask people for suggestions. These kind of posts are golden. Now don't do it every single day. But these posts are golden. Ask people for suggestions on a pair of shoes. Show them pictures. And like literally say, which one should I get? Don't ask them for like a brand or something. Ask them which one you should get. I remember Stephanie Parks was getting her nail done and she posted like, which one should I do? And she had so many replies to it 
because that's what grabs people's attentions. And the more replies you get, bam, the more Facebook's like, hey, look at that. This person's awesome. Be vulnerable. People will relate to you. Um, so I'm going to tell the next tip and then I'm going to talk about the post that I made today. You also need to talk about objections to coaching in your post. And if you listen to the national wake up call, then you heard this on there. So today I made a very vulnerable post. I posted a picture of me in my bikini because the other day I heard from somebody, she's like, well, I'm not fit enough to be a coach. Uh, have you seen me? I'm not fit enough. I don't have a six pack of abs. I'm not like my ideal size. So I posted a picture of me in my bikini and I talked about that objection. I talked about it in my post. That post has nearly 200 likes and a crap ton of comments on it now because I put myself out there. I build a lot of trust with people today by putting that post out there because they know that I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. I'm not trying to pretend I'm the most fit person, that I'm human, that I make mistakes, that I gain weight. Because I posted that, I've had numerous people message me and be like, oh my gosh, that was super inspiring. Like, what can you, like, I want to try whatever you're doing. Like, how can I do this? Like, how can I be a part of this? You have to put yourself out there. Talk about objections to coaching in your post. The more you talk about those objections in your post, the less you're going to get those objections. So if you get objections like, I'm not fit enough, bring that up when you're posting. I'm not saying like, oh, hey, everybody says they're not fit enough, so they can't be a coach. Obviously, be creative with the way that you post it, but use objections. If price is like an objection for people, you're going to want to post about that. Be like, yeah, something like I can't come up with a post off the top of my head, but you can talk about like how you are super on the fence because of the price of coaching and the price of Shakeology, but now you can't go a day without it and you get to save this much every single month. If you get the objection of, I don't have time, talk about how you're fitting this into your daily lifestyle. The more you talk about these objections in your post, the less you'll see these objections. Let's talk about the do nots. The do nots are my favorite. Do not post at 1 a.m. I literally saw somebody, and I don't even remember who it was, a part of the new coach internship. She did a help wanted. She posted it at 1 a.m. Who is going to see that? No one, unless you're an insomniac, and most likely you are not. So no one's going to see it. So you just wasted a post that no one's ever going to see. And you're probably like, why didn't everybody reply? Because you posted it at 1 a.m. Think about the times that you post. You have to think about that. Do not use stock photos. I hate nothing more than when I see a coach using a stock photo from Beachbody. And I will personally message you and tell you to take that down. Do not use stock photos. Use your own photos. Don't use the ones that Beachbody have made for. Yeah, they're great. They're awesome. But everybody else and their mother is using them. Make yourself stand out. Don't steal other posts or photos. Now, if somebody says, yeah, you can totally use this post, go for it. But I hate nothing more than when I'm scrolling and I'm like, wait, I just saw the same picture from another coach who's not on our team, but yet she's using this picture. Like, what's going on? Chances are, if I saw that, then other people are going to see that. Don't steal other people's posts or photos. Also, do not share. If I post something and you share it, guess what that does? That gives people to come to me, not to you. You gotta do your own post. Do not put your link in post. You will instantly get a message from me saying, take that down right now. You wanna build relationships. You don't wanna look like a salesperson. And the minute you put a link somewhere, you look like a salesperson. Do not put your link in your post. Don't put them in the comments. Don't talk about prices in the comments. Always message people. There's nothing worse than I see when people are like, how much is this? And then right there in the little comment, I see, oh, it's 140. And I'm like, girlfriend, like you probably just lost a sale or you probably just lost somebody that wants to change their lives because you didn't explain what they got for 140. You didn't explain to them the value of it. You cannot do things like that. Another thing is you may not even think about, don't use all caps in your photos or not any photos in your um, like posts. In Facebook world and in the internet world, when you use caps, it means you're yelling at people. So don't use caps. Use like normal text. What else? There was a couple other um, tips I wanted to give you guys, um, and I can't seem to think of them off the top of my head, and I thought I had everything written down. So if I think of some, I'll let you know. All right, so what's my call to action for you guys? First things first, I really want to finish that with I'm the realist. I don't know what song that's from, and I know it's just extremely corny, and I hope one of you laughed at me. Okay, you have to clean up your social media. People will go back, and they will stalk your old pictures. There is nothing creepier than when somebody likes an Instagram picture from, like, 
I don't know, like 78 weeks ago. And I'm like, whoa, buddy, like, can you hold the stocking down? Like bring it down to a two year, about a 10. People will go through and look at your old pictures. When I became a coach and when I started to become successful at this, I instantly went through, I deleted all of the tags that had me drinking from my college days or really dumb posts. Like I literally went through and cleaned everything up. Just like, I think like, okay, what I want this person to see this. If this person was thinking of signing up underneath me as a coach, would I want them to see this picture of me? If you even have to question yourself about that, chances are you should probably delete it. So go through and clean up your social media. Um, don't be afraid to take chances. Don't be afraid to test what times work better for you. What pictures look better for you? What posts work better for you? Don't be afraid to take chances. And lastly, take what you've learned from this and apply it to your business. I have built my entire, entire business through social media. Chances are, if you were a coach underneath me, you probably never met me in real life. You found me through social media. So when it comes to social media, I kind of know what I'm talking about. And I don't mean to sound cocky, but I do. I kind of know what I'm talking about because this is how I have built my entire business. So think about what you're posting. Think about like, will this make somebody want to follow me or unfollow me? Will this make somebody hate me or unhate me? But still be you. Like, I cannot wait for you guys to listen to Trey talk because he is the most unapologetic authentic person I've ever met. Dude loves to curse and he does not censor himself at all. Like, I'm like, you go Trey, like you go. I'm a cursor, but I still try to censor myself because I was like, crap, I lived with a pastor for like a year. Like, do I really want them to see that? I'm like, you know what? I really don't care. They're going to love me regardless. Be you. Have content. Think about what you're posting. Post three to four times a day. Not always fitness unless it's a like page. So, those are my tips when it comes to Facebook. Those are my tips on posting with a purpose. Um, I'm going to open up to you guys. Does anybody have any questions, any comments, any tips, something that was like, oh, wow, like I probably have been doing this and I'm probably going to stop doing this right now. Um, if you have anything you want to add, just let me know and I can take you off mute. See how well this is. Oh, hey, look, somebody wants to talk. I have something to add. Yeah. Um, also, don't suggest like scheduling your like page posts through Facebook because that algorithm that Ashley was talking about, it like sends your posts to the bottom of the pile too. Yeah, 100% true. I used to schedule my posts on my like page and I was like, no one ever sees these. Nobody sees it. Now, it might be different if like you use Hootsuite or some other automatic scheduler, but I don't recommend... Hootsuite won't even work because Facebook hates you using outside companies and they want you in real time. So they'll do the same exact thing. So they'll bury you. So you have to actually like wake your ass up and post something. <laughs> and what I recommend is if you're like, so sometimes there are nights where I'm like laying in bed. I'm like, oh man, this is a really good post, but it's 11 o'clock. I'm not going to post this. Guess what? I put in my notepad. It's saved. And the next day I copy and paste it. Like I was talking to Jessica. I don't know where Jessica is. She's somewhere on my screen. Jessica Whitaker one night. And she was like, oh my God, this person just said no to Shakeology for the shake. And I went and like did research and I'm like, oh my God, this thing is awful. Like horrible. You better believe I had a post ready to go. And the next morning I was like, boom, that thing is out in the universe. And I had it ready to go. I had it in my notes. So anytime you like think of something, put in your notes, like jot it down. Like if you think it's going to be a good post, because chances are you ain't going to remember the next day. Thank you, Stephanie. One, yes. Oh, Heather, I'm coming. Give me a second. I got to find you. Heather, Heather, Heather. Just saying. All right, go for it, Heather. So I was on a call with Patrick Reelman uh -huh. uh, last week. Yeah. And he recommended liking other coaches, like on your team posts, so that it will get more visibility. But is that similar to sharing or? Do you think it's safe to like other coaches' posts? I have like, if I have like, I don't know, I have mixed reactions because if I like somebody's post, my husband's like, I saw you just like this person's post. I saw it in my newsfeed. So what's going to happen is your friend's going to see this other coach. So they may go to that coach, which again is totally okay because they may relate to that other coach, but other people are going to see what you're liking. So they're going to start following that person. So I have like mixed emotions on it. No, don't get me wrong. I will comment and like my coach's post, 
but be mindful of how you're doing it. Like I, you, I never like Lindsay Matway's post because no offense, if I like somebody's Lindsay Matway's post, then they're going to go check out Lindsay Matway. And let's face it, somebody's probably going to choose Lindsay Matway over me any day of the week. I don't blame them. So I'm very careful about who I do and do not like. Does that make sense, Heather? Do you want me to unmute you again? Or are you good? You're good. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Who took their energized before the team call? Can, Anybody? Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Is this Katrina? Katrina. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Katrina? Um, what are your opinions, thoughts about um, text on photos? How much text do you like, you know, including sayings on your photo? I personally do like text on photos. Like if I'm going to post a quote, I'd rather post a picture of me with the quote on my photo because that's what people are going to be. They're going to see me and then they're going to see that quote. So I say go for it. Now, obviously don't have your entire photo like with a text on it, but absolutely go for it. I do it quite a bit. Did I lose Katrina? Oh, she just muted herself after that. What happened? Katrina, I think I'm, Katrina, did you mute yourself? I'm going to go with you muted yourself. Oh, I, no, I muted myself because I didn't want any like background noise oh, no, or whatever. No, so. Does that but help no, though? Thank you. I just, yeah, yeah. I just wanted your kind of opinion or what, or what works for you. So perfect. Stephanie, look yeah. at those guns, girlfriend. She's like, are you talking to me? <laughs> me? Yeah. <laughs> My guns? You flexed a little. I saw a little muscle pop. Oh, I am flexing, girl. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions about Facebook or anything that I talked about? No. Okay, so we always hang out for after the calls. What I'm going to start doing going forward is after the call and after we've asked questions about the call, I'm going to stop recording, but I do stay on so I can answer any questions about coaching. This is my way of enticing other people to join us because they're... I'm sorry, I just hiccuped. They are missing out. So let's do our photo real quick. Everybody smile. One, two, three. Did it go? Did it go? I didn't hear a clip. Let's try that again. One, two, three. Ah, there we go. All right. I held that smile for you too long. All right. If you are not on this call, join us next week. And again, I do stay on afterwards. You guys don't have to leave if you have any questions. Um, join us next week. I think next week I'm going to talk about overcoming objections. I think that's going to be a good one because I think that's a lot of stuff that we need to hear. So make this an amazing week. Keep pushing. Um, this is the last week to rank up for the month of January. So if you are one coach away, make that push. Make this an amazing week, and I will see you guys next week.